we are really lucky today. We just increased the brightness on our mobile devices to see this painting. This is a fresco. It's done about 1500 years ago. <laughs> Let that sink in. In a cave so deep inside that you had to light a hundred lamps to see the whole picture. Padmapani, meaning the one who holds the lotus and bodhisattva, one who has been awoken by the Buddhist spirit and helps and waits for everyone else to achieve nirvana before himself. What a guy. There is a reason he has been painted here. He is the poster child for renunciation, commitment and selflessness. There is a lot happening in the background, a lot of worldly things, but he has made a commitment. He focuses on the lotus. He wants to attain Bodhisattva. The Padma or lotus is the announcement. This person would be cool to hang out with today, a true millennial, carrying a satchel around his neck, fluidly ornamented chilling in his own Zen space inside a cave far, far away. When you look closely, it looks like a man, an unusual, unconventional king of sorts. The crown on top of his head tells us a lot. It tells us he is ready to renounce his worldly possessions, his class, his status, and that crowns were popular even in the 5th century, and that flowers, pearls, sapphire and amethyst were not yet a threat to masculinity. <laughs> the scene seems to be that of a cool low-key house party inside a glorious cave, probably grooving to the tunes of the late 450 BC's music scene. The monks are chanting. Everybody is consciously meditating. In the background, we can see the great outdoors and elaborate creatures from other worldly realms kicking back under soothing palm trees. This painting is so deep inside the monolithic caves of Ajanta that only the light from a thousand lamps will bring out its true colors. I wonder how the painter managed to paint in such crisp detail and a perfectly vivid palette in just the light coming from fire alone. Remember, this masterpiece was produced a thousand years before the other masterpiece, the Sistine Chapel, painted upon freshly laid lime plaster. Italian Renaissance art, so revered for its glorious depictions of the heavens with cosmic celebrations graced with pristine naked bottoms. Did the artists really paint with a thousand torches on? How did they manage to get so many of them back then? Monsoon sale? <laughs> so much for enlightenment. <laughs> His eyes seem somber and peaceful, creating a synergetic sense of calm in the room, almost meditative, exploring realms unknown to who have yet not known enlightenment. This Bodhisattva seems to be a citizen of the world, an unabashed, gender-fluid shapeshifter, having several names and forms across continents. In Tibet, he is called Chen Rezig, Avalok Teshwar in Cambodia, Kanzion in Japan, and is a female figure, Guan Yin in China. It's almost as if he was not a person at all, but an idea of enlightenment, nirvana. The tropical moss and flakes on the walls add to the story. Please remember, this painting has survived 1500 glorious monsoons and summers and autumns. But then this happened. So last monsoon, in a few quick seconds, Vikas proclaimed his love for Priya in a few crude strokes at the Ajanta Elora's cave number two. He should have been caught, 
and charged as per the law for defacing Indian heritage. What Vikas did was illegal by the way. I hope he still loves Priya and after listening to this, he loves art too. Please subscribe to Art History Plus. Also do like, comment and please share this video. Thank you. And if you are listening to this Vikas, please don't do that again.